Hello everyone, it's Serpent, and in this video I'll be showing you my 3-bit uh, data storage. Essentially what this does is you pick a slot using this, uh, this interface over here, and then over here the, uh, the, 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 da the data stored in that slot will be um, brought over to this display and shown here. And you can edit the data with this lever and uh, and this lever and this button, they all will sort of work together. So I'm just going to show you how it works. Right now we have the zeroth slot <laughs> selected right now, um, and that would be this one over here since my binary decoder kind of turned out a little bit wonky. Um, but you can see that there is currently no data stored in here since I'm using locked repeaters. I'll, I'll, I'll explain the uh, uh, mechanics of it a little bit later. But you can see that there's no data stored in there, and also that is mimicked on this uh, display. So if we want to edit that, we pull this lever here, and now if we pull this one, we can lock in a value right here uh, with this button. So we select whether it's going to be 0 or 1 with the lever, and then we lock it in with the button. And now you can see that this lever doesn't change that one, that, that um, that value it changes the second um, so let's say we want it on off on we do that and then for the last value we select on and then we unflick this lever and this one doesn't matter which order um, and you can see that it's locked in the on off on 101 zero, one, uh, for slot zero, 0 I've done a couple of these so, for example, slot, uh, slot 2 is this, it's just the number 2 in binary, um, and then slot 3 is, once again, the number 3 in binary, and you can see that over here we're just selecting the slot with a binary decoder, depending on which, which slot you select, you will um, get <laughs> the data value of that slot, slot over here. And then, of course, you can edit it. So, say I wanted, about, uh, say I wanted slot three to be different from this. I just pull this lever again, and we say, and now we can edit the digits one by one, the places. So let's do off on off this time. Push the button, and now we can edit the second value, and now the third, and now we're done. So now this value, uh, slot 3, has has 2 stored in it instead of 3. A um, little bit confusing there. But if we go back to uh, 0, you can see that we have the on, off, on. Uh, yeah, so how does this actually work? Well, we, as you saw before, we use lock, locked repeaters to store the on and offs. Um, and they are locked, as you can see, by these repeaters and these and these. Now, those which, whether or not the repeaters are locked, whether or not you can um, edit their value, um, is dictated by whether or not these cauldrons are in this are in this place, are down, but being pushed down by the piston into the way of the comparators, or if you want if you're editing them then they will be up like this, out of the way of the comparators, and the comparators will no longer be locking the, will be powering these repeaters. However, you can see that they are still powered, and that's because we aren't in edit mode. Over here, the uh, edit, the edit mode is dictated by this lever over here, and more or less the path, this just goes over and powers these pistons right here and that pushes them in the way of these. Now, once again, these aren't all powered either, only one of them, and that's because you only want to be able to edit one slot at a time. Because if you, if you were editing, editing all three at a time, you'd only be able to have all three lights on or all three lights off. So you want to edit one at a time. And that's what this mechanism over here does, the counting mechanism. More or less, there's just an item in here and when you push the button, it moves over one dropper, and when you push it enough times, it goes up into these hoppers and back down into here. And that d 
And that makes these uh, comparators, these comparators draw a signal from that, depending on which, um, which uh, dropper the item's in, that will power or lock, uh, <laughs> lock or unlock the corresponding layer. Uh, and since we're dealing, we're trying to, we're trying to minimize the wires here, so we have one layer for each set of wires. All the wires draw off one layer. Um, and basically that, that means that the, uh, hold on, sorry, had an itch, very unprofessional, sorry. Um, whoops. <laughs> uh, that means that the layers, uh, are locked all at once or not. And if they're not, then the locking depends on these comparators. F so a quick recap, if the, uh, if the whole line is locked, all of the slots are locked. But if only if only um, one, or if one of the lines is being powered by the comparator here, which is a which is a signal inverted by the torch, so they're all locked by default. Um, so if one of the lines is being powered, this torch turns off and the whole line is unpowered except for the comparators. So that means that only the slot with the cauldrons out of place will be uh, at only the slot with the cauldrons out of place and without the um, line, whole line being locked will be able to be edited, which it means we can edit one slot at a time in any of the uh, locations. Also, these sans sandstone blocks are um, unimportant. Ignore them. Um, so, the way we get a signal from one individual uh, individual slot, individual um, uh, what did I call them? I think slots. Yeah, uh, is that the binary de binary decoder that we use over here to select which uh, slot we're editing and viewing? Um, that's that basically powers this wire, and that wire powers these pistons, moving or re uh, extending or retracting the cauldrons, depending on whether it's selected or not. And it also uh, extends or retracts these blocks, whoops, <laughs> these blocks right here, and here, and here, um, which go in the way of these repeaters, or don't, depending on whether the slot is selected or not. And as you can see over here, these are up, meaning the repeaters can power the blocks and power the lines. So only one slot will affect the display at a time, even though the entire line feeding into the display is loosely connected to uh, each each slot at a time. Uh, and as you can see over here, this is on, but it's not reaching the wire because the, it's not selected, the slot isn't selected. So how do we get the values from this lever into the specified slot? Well, that's done through this wire, obviously, and uh, connected to the lever. And the the whether or not the repeater is locked or not and can be edited is dependent on this counting mechanism that we saw earlier. Um, that that means that the uh, yes, it's also <laughs> right. It's also dependent on these cauldrons that we also saw earlier. So that means that this wire will travel over here, and it will go. It will power or unpower these blocks depending on whether the lever is powered or unpowered. We can turn this on. We aren't in edit mode, right? No, <laughs> okay. So you can see that these repeaters aren't being affected. None of them are. Uh, and these uh, these ones aren't either because the uh, because we aren't in edit mode. We aren't, uh, these lines are all powered at the moment. But if we turn it into uh, edit mode like this, then you can see that the lines still travel through the whole thing. And the and down here, you can see that this one is being powered because it's unlocked. And only this repeater is unlocked. Uh, and that's because this cauldron isn't in the correct, or it is, it is in the correct place, but it's not in the way of the comparator. So the, the comparator isn't locking this repeater. Uh, so, uh, the way, once again, back to where we <laughs> started off in that sentence, um, the way the signal gets through is it goes over from there, 
along this wire, and it, the wire is split down all three lanes. And it goes through this block right above the lock repeater, as well as powering the block behind the repeater. And then it travels onto this one and does the same thing, and goes through the same block, etc. Um, so, uh, what, what next? The button. The button just uh, triggers the clock. It's set up to a monostable, and it will send a one tick pulse through here, and the observers tra track that and power this observ this uh, dropper first, then this one, then this one. So it won't power this, then this, then this, forcing the item through all three of them and back to the start in one click. It will power this one, but the item's not there. So it'll power this one, but the item's not there. And it'll power this one, so it'll move over here. So next time you power it, it will move over again. Um, and then, of course, it just goes to the hoppers and back to the front. Uh, the next problem is that while you're editing, um, while you're editing, you don't want to, well, I'll just show you. So uh, over here, let's see, I need to get rid of this redstone. And basically, we're on slot 0. So if we go into edit mode, then we, we can uh, edit the first slot, and we'll have it unpowered. So that's good. And then the second slot can also be unpowered. But we want th the third slot to be powered. And then when we click the button again, um, you can see that that slot instantly turns back on, because we're still in edit mode, even though, um, we, even though we have finished the clock. We have finished the counting mechanism. And if we turn this off, then it's locked into, the, into place. Um, and if we turn this off, then uh, off, it does work, but it's not. It's not so great. I don't like that. So what I have, what I've done is I've placed in this mechanism, which uh, when the clock, when the clock turns uh, all the way around. So when the uh, when this item goes from here to here to here and out again, that will mean that this torch turns back on, having had an item in it. Um, and the redstone line here turns on, powering this dropper, which forces the item into the hopper, and then the, and then that goes into this uh, pulse extender. So you've got a fair amount of time to turn off this switch before the uh, light will turn back on, or before it'll resume edit mode. So I've just looked over everything, and uh, we are done with the um, showcase. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.